Go ahead. Yeah. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone, based on your time, John. And welcome in Salesforce Apex R. Today, our topic is build high flexible lightning component using the custom metadata. And our speaker is Zakuha. My name is Amit Chaudhary. I'm the founder of the Salesforce Apex R and the co organizer of the Farm Interim Salesforce Developer Group. So let me hand over to Goa. Hello everyone. Uh, good morning and good evening, depending on your time zone. Um, so this is Guha Armagham from Washington DC. So I've been uh, in Salesforce ecosystem for around uh, uh, nine years um, and I'm working with Acumen Solutions as a senior technical consultant. Uh, you would have seen me in multiple places um, based on where you live. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's my short introduction and uh, let's get started with the uh, topic today. All right, um, so so as you know, our topic is basically building highly flexible lightning components using the custom metadata types. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are uh, right now using this technique. Um, it's pretty much a straightforward one, uh, nothing uh, tricky or complex. Um, uh, the one thing I found about this topic is um, uh, so we usually create lightning components for our projects and uh, we, the, the most common scenario we end up is uh, we create multiple lightning components based on the requirements and uh, uh, most of the time we tend to uh, lose the flexibility over there. So we end up creating uh, repetitive components or maybe a similar component which could be merged together in one component. So, so that's the that's the triggering point for me to come up with this idea um, to do it with Lightning custom metadata types. So you can create one component that you can reuse everywhere in your application, depending on uh, the needs. Of course, there could be certain requirements which you cannot uh, like um, try to merge the components into one component, which is absolutely fine. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. But if there are like components which is very similar to what you already created or what you already have, um, always try to create a component that you can uh, reuse and if that uh, if that is possible and that would save a lot of time in your development and also a lot of money for your customers. So without any uh, further ado, let's get started on some introductions. So the first introduction is basically uh, about the custom metadata types, obviously. Um, so we all know custom metadata types uh, existing in Salesforce for the past uh, probably four years now. Um, so custom metadata types are uh, nothing but uh, like a, it's another configuration like a custom object, but it's slightly different from how you use the custom object and the custom metadata types. So when you do custom objects, uh, you would create fields and uh, it's pretty much like a data table. Right, so you create fields for your object, you call the object a name, and then uh, you create uh, all the related uh, fields or attributes for that name, and then uh, you make it as a custom object. And it is a similar way where custom metadata types, and you won't be creating data object, instead you will be creating objects for your metadata, uh, which means, uh, let's say you have an object called um, accounts, right? So account has account name, uh, account number, and so other details. But custom metadata types will not store those type of details. It, it should not store. Uh, ideally, you can technically store uh, those type of information, but that is not the purpose of uh, custom metadata types. Custom metadata types is uh, specifically designed for you to uh, um, take advantage of the flexibility in storing your business rules. Uh, let's say you have a huge, uh, huge uh, customer requirement that needs a lot of uh, mapping rules, or maybe uh, you need another uh, master data table uh, that needs to be referenced in multiple places. So those are the use cases where you'll go with custom metadata types. It will look, it will look very similar to your custom objects, as I told earlier. You will have uh, field creations. Uh, you will have uh, object creation, like uh, a custom metadata type. You will have uh, a name for that object. You will have uh, specific names for the fields. And you will create uh, the, the whole look will be very similar to your custom objects. But you will be storing um, uh, metadata informations. 
and uh, sometimes even uh, we used to store uh, the object names and the uh, field names the api names and uh, the field uh, api names uh, inside the custom metadata types so that that is why it is called metadata types because uh, each record in the custom metadata type will become a particular type that you will use for a business rule um, so I'll, I'll explain more when we do the demo and I'll show you why it is, why it is named as custom metadata, metadata types. And some other advantages with custom metadata types is, um, so unlike custom settings, you don't have to um, do a data load for your uh, deployment, post deployment activity. So if you compare with custom settings, uh, you would be migrating that custom settings through chain sets or whatever the tools you use for deployment. And then you would be, um, and then you would be uh, doing a data load for those custom settings because that is not going through your uh, chain set, right? So custom metadata types eliminates those challenges. You can now deploy your uh, records, the custom metadata type records, uh, into the other org through chain sets or any other uh, deployment tools, uh, and it goes just like your uh, custom object. And then the other one is, it is queryable and uh, cacheable, so which means you can freely use it in your Apex. And uh, and there are some limits to custom metadata types as to how many metadata types you can create in an R, and uh, there are limits to how many records you can query. So check your uh, Salesforce help document uh, for those limits. Um, so always be aware about this, about those limits. And so that's a small introduction about custom metadata types. More information, you can find it in the help document. You can um, deep dive into it if you are new to custom metadata types. Moving on. So this, um, so this uh, presentation today is going to be uh, focused, uh, the demo is going to be focused on our components, but the concept here uh, is completely uh, flexible for both Lightning Web components and our components. Um, uh, I'll be sharing your GitHub URL uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, you can go ahead and uh, check out the code, or if you want to reuse the code, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, right now, the code is only on the ARA components. Uh, I'm working on the uh, LWC demo. Um, probably before the Dreamforce, uh, I would be posting that across and then uh, go ahead and start exploding. But the concept is going to be the same. It's uh, nothing different from ARA components. So uh, it was this concept was developed way long back. So. Uh, I just have that demo as, as of now ready. So uh, just a refresher for our components and also give a refresher for uh, LWC as well. So refresher for our components, it's um, as you know, uh, our components are the uh, framework, uh, the proprietary framework for uh, Lightning components uh, initially for Salesforce. And now we move to LWC, right? Uh, the future is going to be LWC. So always try to develop the new components in LWC. And as you know, uh, for our components, uh, you have the component file, JS file, helper, style file. So all these are like uh, the pretty basic files uh, that you would be using for our component. And as you know, our component is developed for uh, a single page application. Uh, so this basically means, um, uh, unlike your classic Visual Force pages and the Apex, uh, you don't have to create multiple pages uh, for your uh, uh, application, you create one page and use components, uh, create multiple components to uh, reuse between the pages. And even the page transition can be done through the components. So that is the whole idea why Salesforce came up with this uh, Lightning components, which, which, which is now called as Aura components. And it is the same idea. Uh, Salesforce is moving towards uh, LWC um, because LWC is now the uh, modern programming language uh, because it is now very equal to uh, the common uh, web standards and also it is the way forward for uh, Salesforce uh, to uh, build lightning components on the uh, LWC uh, programming model and it is it becomes more useful uh, and also easy for the other for the other developers to adapt this and it, it is also very uh, uh, flexible and uh, and also easy to implement uh, in terms of uh, the efforts needed for uh, implementing the LWC. Um, so irrespective of the concept today, um, I would always recommend go with your uh, Lightning Web Components. If you are someone who's already creating Lightning Web Components, you can directly take away this concept and start trying out some 
the most of prototypes in your organization. All right, so getting into the concept. So we often hear this word flexibility, right? So um, uh, yeah, if it, if it was a, a live audience, I would have had a headcount on how many of you think that uh, it, uh, reusability is equal to flexibility. Uh, but ideally, most of us uh, have this idea of like, okay, when, when we say flexibility, it means reusability, but it is actually more than reusability. Of course, reusability is one attribute of flexibility but uh, flexibility doesn't just say just just about the reusability it also says different things so here's a split uh, between the real world definition of flexibility and your uh, definition of um, uh, flexibility in lightning components so if you see uh, in in one word uh, flexibility is it should be bendable or it should be easily customizable it should be um, it should be it should be changeable into any form or state so that is what we call as flexibility in the real world, right? So if you apply the whole set of attributes to lightning components, then that should be the perfect uh, flexible lightning component, which means you should be able to change the shape and uh, the feature of the lightning component into anything uh, without modifying your code, uh, which means it's, it is customizable and configurable. And uh, it should be able to be like uh, show and hide and uh, uh, it should fit into any shape whenever you need it. So that is what uh, is flexible in terms of lightning component development. So that's what we are going to see today, like how, how we can design a lightning component uh, that flexible, um, but you also need some additives for that flexibility, right? So you cannot outright create a lightning component uh, with just giving the attributes uh, directly on your code. So whenever, so, so this is the, so this is the constraint that will create uh, where um, you try to give all the values in your, inside your code and uh, your code will begin, uh, begin um, sorry, become uh, more rigid. So the more uh, you stay away from uh, instructing directly on the code, the more flexible your component would be. And we will see in a bit uh, through the demos. All right. So as I told, uh, so today we are using those traditional approaches, uh, irrespective of uh, RR or LWC. Uh, you would be seeing this first approach, like the traditional approach. Um, you write a component uh, for the UI, and then you uh, create an Apex controller uh, based on what you want to do with uh, SF object data. And then your Apex controller will call the SF object data to pull in the data, or maybe to store the data or update the data. Uh, whatever, excuse me, whatever you want to do uh, with that. So there are three step process, right? So we have our LWC uh, that interacts with your Apex controller and the Apex controller in turn, in turn in, interacts with your SF object. And uh, the next approach that we are going to see today is uh, the custom metadata type approach. So if you see in this diagram, there is going to be like a small change where you do the same traditional approach, but before going into your SF object, you're going, to, uh, you're routing through the uh, custom metadata type and then coming back to the Apex controller and then go to the uh, SF object. You might be thinking this might be one step extra uh, in terms of uh, execution. Of course, it is going to be extra, but uh, is that a really a worthy trade-off? Yes, if it is going to be a worthy trade-off when you design one component uh, for multiple users. And uh, yeah, with, with our current architecture framework in in Salesforce, uh, this is the way forward uh, for this concept, but uh, this might change in the future. Uh, you may even don't need to do custom metadata types as well. Um, so at that time, you can have a different concept altogether. But for this custom metadata types, um, so what we will do is the aura component that you create, it will do the same thing. You create the table or form, whatever you want to create with the aura component on the UI, you create the same thing. So instead of, uh, uh, so once you create that and then you contact the Apex controller um, during the interaction, during the execution, and the Apex controller, the small change there is instead of directly accessing your object, which means you are not going to be specifying, uh, okay, go ahead and access this uh, account or go ahead and access this uh, contact object or opportunity object, whatever the object it is, until until the runtime, 
until the APIS controller contacts the custom metadata types, it doesn't know which object it is going to retrieve the data. So uh, what it does is uh, the APEX controller will first contact the custom metadata types as per your uh, code instructions. And uh, it will pull out the API name for the object, API name for the fields, uh, and uh, whatever. Uh, if you have filter criteria, you can add it to the custom metadata types. And uh, whatever you want to add, you can add it in the custom metadata types. And custom metadata types will be saying, instructing your APEX controller uh, to, okay, you go to this particular object, these are the fields and these are the filter criteria. Uh, you query all these uh, records from the object and then uh, do whatever you want to do on the RR LWC. So that's what uh, APEX controller will do. And then uh, it, it then identifies, okay, this is going to be the object, this is going to be the fields. And then it goes to the SF object and then pulls in the data and then provides you back to the RR LWC. So, uh, moving forward, I have two demos today. So one, um, uh, let's uh, instead of going to the going to the demo one by one, let's do the demo all together uh, at a stretch. So let me explain you the scenario. So this is a this is a completely imaginary scenario. So what I have is a, a, a sales rep from an organization wants to have a single page application, and the single page application should have uh, like a table maybe, um, so account, contact, or opportunity, whichever table they want to work on. And they want their admins to like uh, quickly change anything whenever they ask for a change. Um, so imagine imagine you are in an organization working as a developer in the team and then your uh, business analyst or your consultants come, come back and say, hey, I want to change on this table. Uh, can you add one extra field or maybe remove two other fields? And what you would ideally do in the traditional approach, if you look at this traditional approach, you would have already defined those columns and on the ARA table, right? So either you have to go and touch this Apex controller to change the fields, or you will be uh, changing your ARA component based on how you design the component. If you have a hard coded those uh, column labels and stuff like that, then you will be touching the ARA component or uh, you would be touching the Apex controller. Uh, based on however the design you have. So we are going to eliminate the whole need of, again, go and touch back on the uh, Apex controller or any of the any of the part of the code, right? So we have we, we are going to keep all those um, uh, constraints on to the custom metadata types. So now the admin can go ahead inside uh, your uh, configuration and then do that change real quick in five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And we are going to cut down that whole development effort. Uh, which would ideally be needed in this traditional approach. So this use case is for, uh, let's have like a data table and see how your custom metadata types instructs your data table to, um, to render on the UI. And the other scenario is I'm going to have a, a lightning form, uh, which is going to be like a record view form. And uh, we are going to have custom metadata types uh, instruct how the form should be rendered what fields to show and what fields not to show. Um, and you, we can also have like a, um, a toggle between the table and the view form, which is going to be like more of a hybrid uh, side of it. And uh, yeah, those gonna be a little fun side of, of our demo today. So these are the two scenarios which I wanted to show. Uh, let's uh, get into the demo, just give me a second. All right, so I have, so I'm going to this, um, I'm going to set up and I'm going to search for custom editor type. So if you see here, I have already created a custom editor types um, and I have created a particular um, uh, record for that. Um, so this is the, configuration of custom metadata types you will do. And this will be the representation of the whole metadata type object. And uh, if you see the annotation will be uh, underscore MDT, which means uh, metadata type. Uh, and then you'll have a facility to create fields, custom fields. 
and if you see this whole structure it's pretty much it's very much similar to your custom object configuration you'll have all those um, uh, created by and all those uh, name and label other stuffs and then also you have uh, custom fields you can create and you have page layouts you have validation rules so these are the flexibility that salesforce provides for you to you know treat your custom metadata type like an object in in terms of uh, migration or in terms of deployment uh, it will be more easy for you to move this whole object uh, rather than um, doing it manually and uh, to see the data you need to click on this manage then uh, manage whatever the metadata type name is so i have kept it as a dynamic table metadata so i'm going to click on this so this is where my object records are here and you also like unlike so like like your other uh, uh, object configuration you can create list views and then uh, let's see an example of uh, what i have created for one of the uh, record so this whole record will become uh, uh, instruction for one of my code inside that uh, demo. I'll show you that later. Um, so if you see here, I'm saying this is a configuration for um, account table. Uh, so I'm giving the name as account table and I have given the API names of the fields, so name and type. And uh, the object name is account. And I'm also having an attribute called row account. Uh, row count. So row count will be the number of rows that it should show up on the UI and the type is table because uh, i have also the demo for uh, the form so i want to have a variable that should uh, differentiate between um, the type uh, type of the component that is being rendered so this type will instruct what type of format it should render all right so the next one uh, let's go into the demo side so i have created a lightning page which is basically the app builder page uh, that we usually create. And I have created a few lightning components. If you see on the left-hand side, uh, I have a few lightning components. And this is only for the demo purpose. So to show you the difference, I have created this five components, but ideally it will be just one component, which I'll come back to this um, last part of the demo. Uh, this is a um, flexible hybrid component. Uh, I just gave it a name, but uh, what it does is, uh, it is that one component that composes all these variations. So whatever I'm going to show in this other four components, all these combined together makes that one hybrid component. And in ideal, in the realistic scenario, you would be creating just that one component and it fits in all places of your application. So let's uh, start with the first part of the demo where uh, I'm going to show you, yeah, flexible table demo, I think that is the component. Yeah, so here um, when I, uh, click and drag and drop, uh, you would see there is one uh, design token that is enabled. Um, so this is basically, uh, as you know, in the RR development, you have this file called design file, design token file, and you can create design tokens, uh, which means those design tokens would be enabled uh, either here in this uh, app configuration page, where an admin can configure anything that you have instructed your component to do or uh, you can add these design token, you can utilize this design token for your lightning flows. If you are using lightning flows and you, if you're having these components inside your uh, lightning flows, then you can do it there. And in LWC, this will be a little different. Uh, you'll be going to that XML file to add it in the target, um, along with the target. Um, so that's where you will instruct, okay, where it should show up. And you would, uh, and it's pretty much the behavior is pretty much the same. It's it's exactly where you are placing it in like LWC and our component. So let's again let's not get into that. Um, our concept is here is so this component will now look out for. So as I told, let me go back to that presentation and go back to that slide. Okay, so here now my ARA component is now placed on the page. So now whenever I go for the runtime execution, uh, this ARA component will now contact this Apex controller. This A Apex controller will now look for that keyword. So this keyword is here. So enter the table name. This is the keyword uh, which I'm going to provide. Uh, it's the keyword and it will look for that keyword. And what it does is uh, after getting that keyword, it's going to contact this custom metadata type records and it's going to identify that one particular record out of that uh, set of records that I have. And it, it's going to pull that record from the custom metadata types. And it's going to pull out that uh, configuration, the whole configuration that I had. So let's say uh, I'm 
having this account table, right? So my keyword will be this account table and you can design uh, uh, in any other different way as well. So you can also have type to pull out that record or if you have separately a, a, a field called keyword and also you can like query based on that keyword. And uh, I'll, you'll, you'll understand more when I show you on the coding side. Uh, but for now, for the demo, let's go ahead and put in this value, account table. This is what uh, my table will be looking at. So when I click outside, you see that uh, there are two fields getting rendered. And uh, once I put in this keyword, it immediately renders all, renders all my data, right? So it's coming from uh, the custom metadata types. And if you see here, name account, uh, sorry, uh, name of the account and type of the account is being pulled. So this is where it's gonna be very handy. Um, so let's say now, let's imagine that scenario uh, where my um, customer comes back and say, uh, hey, Guha, you need to add a, a, a field called uh, industry. Uh, okay, I'm just going to add as industry here in the custom metadata types. And then once I click save, and then let's save this as well. This is a preview anyways, already pulled in, so it will not refresh. So let's go back to the runtime and refresh. Okay, I think there is some spelling mistake over there. Let me try to pull in, a, let me try to pull in a phone number if it is there. And yeah, this is one other thing um, based on how you have designed the code, uh, either it should be case sensitive or uh, there shouldn't be any spelling mistake, there shouldn't be any uh, extra spaces, but you can eliminate those constraints through your, uh, through refining your um, code, the, the Apex code. So the Apex code right now for me, for my model, uh, it is just basically pulling in this field names and forming a dynamic query. Um, and so I'm not doing any checks where there, where, where, whether there are any extra spaces or uh, it is a camel case or it is a small case. I don't, I don't do any of these validations, but in ideal scenario as a, as a, as a pro developer, you would be doing that without that your uh, unit testing or the smoke testing would not be passing out your, the whole component development would not be passing out. Right. So uh, assuming that um, you always do that check keep all the checks in place. Did I say that? I think it's because of this space. Okay. I think it's because of the comma there. It was because of that comma uh, missing. So that's that's the constraint there. Uh, you need to make sure that, um, that you design the logic in a way that it is very robust and uh, it is not uh, running into any issues like this. So the concept, as I told the concept here is, um, so it contacted the, the Apex control contacted the metadata types and the metadata types provided the account table uh, related field values. So the, those field values will be this, right? So um, it will say, okay, the object name is account and the field, name, field names are name, type, and phone. And my code, my, uh, the backend code is uh, designed to uh, get those data and then form a dynamic query. And the row count is also 10. So that will put that into the limit uh, parameter in the SOQL. And then uh, the type is basically to, for the hybrid uh, component, which I have, but uh, for this table, the type will not be applicable. So this is how the whole query is formed. And now once the query is formed, now this Apex controller is now instructed to go to the SF object and do the query and pull in the data as instructed in the query. So this is the whole, the, the simple version of the concept. And then, um, so let's go back to this edit page. So, so you might be wondering, so if I don't want to use uh, custom metadata types, so what would be the other option, right? So I do have one other option for you, which is flexible UI table. Um, so this concept is 
basically uh, if you if you find your lightning component it's already doing heavy load of work and you don't want to overload more on your uh, apex controller uh, you can choose this route where uh, i have all the parameters like the account name field names rows to display all these inside the design tokens in that way my um, instead of defining it in your custom metadata types you can define it directly on your uh, app builder page so you can define your object name here let's say account and field let's say name comma type and the number of rows to display is 10 and i also have one other option to uh, display uh, more number of rows so i'll say 5 if they click on view more uh, they will be uh, seeing 5 five more records on that and then i also have this option to whether do you want to give the uh, flexibility for the users to like click on view more to expand the table um, so that is this oops so if you see this two table it's pretty much more uh, it's pretty much the same right it looks very similar it nothing is changing in the ui but the way it works from the back end is totally different so the first table went to your custom metadata type pulled up that uh, account and uh, sorry pulled up that object and the fields and only then the apex controller became aware of what object is going to query and what fields it's going to query and here in design tokens approach uh, uh, the admin can directly specify in the app builder page if they're using it in app builder and then uh, it is also again uh, admin configurable and you don't have to rely on a development task for adding or removing a role let's say they want they don't want to uh, show the type and they want to show phone for instance so admin can come here uh, click on that uh, edit page and then change it like this and then click on save it immediately changes to your um, desired uh, the desired column and you don't have to spend a week of time or maybe even if it is a one day of uh, development work it is a development work at the end of the day and you're wasting uh, your clients uh, time and money right so this could be a great um, it, this could be a great alternative for uh, your customers to you know uh, have one component approach and then uh, cut down your maintenance cost and uh, your uh, expenditure i mean like their uh, maintenance cost goes down and the productivity is increasing and also developers can concentrate on um, more important uh, stuffs than just altering your table for column and uh, rows and uh, so until now we have seen this table so we had one other scenario for the form right so you might be wondering okay this is a table this could be very simple and straightforward and how about in form right so i have one other component for the form which is also going to be doing the same. Oh, sorry, not this one. So if you see here, I have this form here. And um, for the form, it is very similar to how it showed up for this one, right? So it's asking me the keyword to give. And uh, with that keyword, it's going to uh, directly search in the custom editor types. So let me pull out a particular uh, record for the custom editor type that is in the form okay so we have contact form here so if you see here so i have defined a metadata type record which says contact form obviously that's going to be the keyword and if you say the object the object says contact and the field name says first name and last name and if you see the type it is a form so this is where the type comes in handy um so if i have another uh, so for this particularly it won't be useful because it is basically pulling based on the keyword so which is going to be one record just in case if you have the keyword repeated for any other record uh, then at that time you might be want to using that uh, type parameter to uh, boil down to that one particular record okay so let's see this demo on that um so i'm going to copy paste that uh, contact form keyword so that it identifies that record and if you see here so it's a uh, it's a record view form and it's pulling that particular contacts uh, okay so you might be wondering how i pull this contact so for the demonstration purposes i'm just hard coding one contact uh, from the whole table but ideally you you don't have to hard code you don't you, and it's not a good practice to hard code 
um, but your it, it depends on the nature how you are using this table. So if you are putting this uh, form inside um, a lightning another lightning component, you might be passing through variable, or if you are putting it inside the table. Uh, sorry, if you're putting it inside the lightning flows, uh, you might be passing through variables uh, in the lightning flows. Or if you are keeping this in the directly on the record edit page, you might be uh, specifying it through the record ID parameter. And yeah, you never, never hard code your uh, ID, Salesforce IDs. So um, if I if I want to add one other extra extra field on the form, right? So let's say a customer comes back and say. Hey, um, I want uh, more than just first name and last name. How about e adding an email and also the phone number? So let's go and add email and phone number. Make sure I have this from us there. Yep. So if I click on save, and of course this page will not refresh, so click on save again. Go back to the runtime. So if you see here, I added the email and phone and it automatically added me to the form. And uh, right now I have the form as single column, but uh, if you want to design it as a uh, different two columns, you can also you can also do that. So those are the, uh, the UI parameters or UI attributes that you can always do it in your lightning components. But uh, the key point here is don't have all those metadata information on your lightning component or on your apex controller uh, keep everything on your uh, custom metadata types or if you want don't want to use custom metadata types keep it on your uh, design tokens so on the runtime until it interacts with your apex your lightning component should not know what object it is going to have access or in other in, in a very layman term uh, wherever you throw this lightning component it should work if I have to say it in a very, uh, in a in a very lame, layman term, if you are not aware about the whole development process, um, uh, you if you throw this lightning component inside another page, it should work. And if you change the parameters in your custom custom metadata types or in the design tokens, it should work. A, any anywhere, it should not break because you mentioned, okay, go ahead and contact, uh, uh, go ahead and pull the contact table and uh, pull the pull, pull these four uh, fields. So which means that if there is a change in the future, you're going to touch the code and which obviously means a development effort. And then this, uh, so this is a uh, example for uh, lightning form using custom metadata types. And also I will show you one other form similar to the table, uh, which has no custom metadata types, but it is using the design tokens. So if you see here, um, I have this uh, flexible record view form, which I used using, using only the design tokens, not the custom editor types. So I'll be putting in my object name and the field names here. So let's say first name. So instead of last name, let's say email and phone. And if you see, so whatever you are changing here in this fields, and that will immediately render and uh, for any change in the future you don't have to spend time in like uh, doing going through the whole development life cycle which obviously will take if for any smaller effort it will at least take two three days to finish that right uh, including testing and uh, promoting it to your uh, production but here in in the so let's consider if this if this was a requirement in your real time production uh, let's say your admin your admin was asked to, the admin of the production was asked to add uh, another field. Okay, I, I, I'm seeing only first name and uh, email and phone, what about the last name? So the admin of the production can directly go to the production uh, um, uh, app builder page like this, and then they can just change this parameter. They're not doing any, uh, they're not doing anything wrong by editing any of those uh, data parameters, right? They are just configuring their UI, which they obviously do it in production whenever they need a change. And uh, yes, if it is a development effort, they obviously cannot do it in a production. They have to come back to the sandboxes. From sandboxes, they have to get promoted, and that takes a lot of time. So that's that's the whole concept of this uh, presentation. You know, how you can help your customers uh, reduce those maintenance uh, time and maintenance downtime and other um uh, help them help them keep more productive uh, in a fast paced environment all right so 
that's the concept of uh, these four demos. And now we go to the fun side of how can we merge all these together in one component? So like I told, when I started the presentation, I told the concept is not how to use this uh, custom metadata types. The concept is about how you can use it in one component, have one component model uh, approach and uh, how you can have that one component for all over your applications rather than writing multiple uh, components, right? So I have this uh, hybrid component, which basically what it does is um, it it takes information from your um, um, from your uh, for, for this demo I have created only for the design token approach, and you can design the same thing for your custom metadata types as well. Uh, it's the code is not going to differ in any way. So for this I will show you how it works. So as you as, as you see in the configuration page here. Um, you have the design tokens asking for object name and other parameters. So I'm going to say account, <coughs> sorry. And then for the fields, let's say name, oops, name. Uh, instead of type, I'll just do phone number. Uh, yeah, I'll keep the type as third one just to differentiate from the other table. And then row, let's say 15 instead of 10. And uh, when they do view more, let's do only two records. And you see the whole thing, um, the whole thing rendered as table. And then if I do view more, the whole thing rendered as the table with view more option. So you might be wondering what is different from what I showed you already, right? So the difference is here in this small tiny checkbox. So if I instruct that to show us a form, it will change its shape as form. If I remove that, it will change its shape back to the table. So this is the exact concept of flexibility what I was talking about. So build one component that will that can change its shape, change its flexibility as you instruct from the configuration side, not from the coding side. So um, let's get into the code a little bit and see how we have um, uh, how we have instructed those instructions, sorry, the code to uh, do these type of activities, right? So let me know, Amit, can you see my coding screen, like the uh, editor? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. You increase the phone a little bit, it will be much better for others to understand the code. I'm sorry? Can you increase the phone a little bit? Oh, the font, okay. How about now? Is it, uh, is it good enough or do you want to increase more? Uh, Amit? Yeah, it is better now. Okay. All right, uh, let me drag this control to the bottom. So you may not be seeing this, uh, I'm having this um, screen share control, so I'm just trying this to know. All right, um, so let me close everything and then show you from first. So as you see here, I have set up our components that I showed you. So instead of, um, so let me, yeah, let me go from the first. Uh, so we saw the um, uh, the flexible table with uh, custom metadata types, right? So let me show you that as one example and then I'll directly go to the hybrid to show you all uh, together. So what I'm doing is here is uh, it's a very simple component as you see it's when you only 28 lines of code and uh, you are seeing some attributes here. So these are the attributes used for uh, fetching those uh, metadata type information and processing it in the uh, backend Apex controller. So let's open the Apex controller as well. All right, so if you see, um, I'm using the lightning component um, available for all types of forms and then I'm using this Apex controller here and I have defined a few uh, sets of um, attributes. I'll come back to that what it is doing, but for this four set of attributes, it's basically the parameters that we store inside uh, the custom metadata type. And uh, if you see here, these are all just 
for the uh, UI decorations, but uh, this is the core uh, the, the core element what we see on the UI, uh, the data table. And if you see here, process data list is the one that is feeding the data, like the object data, not the metadata. The object data, object results, the, the records from the object. And columns is obviously the column names uh, that you get from the metadata. Apart from that, uh, I have this view more. So view more will again uh, show that hyperlink. And when I click on hyperlink, it's going to do a specific JavaScript operation to load more data into the table. And so now going back to, uh, okay, let me open up that uh, controller to show you how it interacts with the JavaScript. So on the load of the form, it's going to um, call this method from the Apex and um, once it is calling, uh, it's going to also send that keyword. So if you see this uh, type of table, uh, so that's the keyword that it's going to send. And if you see uh, in the Apex controller, not this method, this one. So list of fields, if you see here the table name and the type string. So the type string is the one that I showed you like the form or table as the keyword, which was inside the custom data drive, right? And if you see here, the first step of the whole Apex operation is basically to pull in all the information from the uh, met metadata type and uh, and it is matching based on that keyword which I'm sending, uh, which is basically the account table in our demo and the type will be table. And once you get that, uh, what I'm doing is I'm processing those uh, fields because uh, one of these uh, metadata type field is the field names, the API names that you're pulling in and this field names are stored in this column names. So this is where I'm splitting those column names based on that comma value. And then I'm adding it to a list and this list will become the uh, feeding point for uh, pulling the data from your, um, the real object. And then if you go down here, uh, one sec, let me see where I'm using that query. So it's over here. So the get data. So we, I'm, I'm using a, a set of wrappers, uh, as you always see uh, in the lightning data table. Um, so I'm not going to explain you the whole set of wrappers, but uh, it is very similar to how we use uh, the lightning data table and we process the uh, result wrapper, right? So uh, that's the same thing, except for the change. Uh, instead of you send the column names directly to the wrapper, uh, in, uh, you would be sending it from the custom metadata types. Now I got a list of field names and this field name will now be used uh, to loop through and I form this wrapper over here. So once this wrapper is formed and it is applied to your UI component over here, the column list and process data list, and this is uh, this is this is where your data table will automatically pull in the pull in your um, list of records. And if you are not using data table, you can still use this approach. Um, if you are, let's say, you are designing for some complex reasons, you are designing a table by yourself. Let's say you are designing a HTML table, and you might not be able to use this data attribute where it will automatically use uh, Lightning Data Services to pull in. Uh, so ha there you will be doing an explicit query uh, to the object. Uh, so you need to have that query as a very dynamic query, uh, which means you have, um, you form, uh, so I'm not getting into the details of how dynamic query is formed, but uh, uh, search for your, uh, search in your Salesforce help document, uh, how to form a dynamic query. And uh, from the custom metadata types, you get that list of fields and you get the list of, uh, sorry, uh, the object and other parameters and form the dynamic query and make the uh, make the uh, SQL call from your Apex controller to pull in the results. So that would be the only difference when you use a custom table uh, rather than a lightning data table. So this is for uh, the table right here. So you send the account table and it's going to pull in from my custom metadata types. Uh, it will get this one record and it will take these parameters account and the field names. And as you see here, that field will now, uh, sorry, where it is. Oops, here. 
yeah the field will now loop through and then get those uh, wrapper label and the field names being assigned and this wrapper result will be assigned directly to this uh, process data list and then the column list is obviously the list of uh, fields that we segregated based on the comma value and this is the um, the, the basic uh, data table uh, thing and keeping that apex controller open I will also show you the hybrid model so if you see in the hybrid model yeah as i told don't hard code the ids here so I have hard coded the ID here to just for the demonstration purpose because I want to pull one uh, contact or one account from that particular um, object because I don't have a real time business scenario to pass in the variables. Um, so if you see the hybrid model here, uh, let me expand this. It's gonna be the same set of attributes that you have and uh, it's gonna be the same set of uh, attributes that you have for process data list and also the data list and um, column list and if you see this attribute would be one extra attribute uh, that you didn't see in the uh, previous component so which means this is this is this is one um, uh, this one variable will instruct the whole uh, form to change its shape so let's see how that is being implemented here so if you see here i, I use the ri um, if in lwc you would be using the um, the alternative uh, if conditions there um and uh, this show form as i click on that button on the ui the show form becomes true or false right based on the based on my action so if it is true i'm going to render the view form because uh, the keyword is show form right so show form means i'm enabling the form view so when i click that as true and this record view form will be enabled and uh, um, for this demonstration i have hard coded this record id but ideally you will be passing from its parent or uh, from your record page wherever it is and uh, the object api name is coming from that configuration let me go back to here so this is the hybrid table right so the object api name is coming from this and the column list is coming from this and i'll, I'll go back to the uh, apex code to show you how it works and the output fields is uh, being iterated over the column list if you see here the iteration is happening and how many other columns you are adding let's say if it is uh, this value it's going to say it's going to do three iterations if it is more number of columns it's going to do that nth number of iteration and render those output fields and it's it's going to show this record view form and if it is else if it is not checked if i'm not checking this um, if I'm checking, it's going to be record view. If I'm not checking this, it's going to be the default table. So I kept the table as the default and uh, switching the record view form based on the checkbox. And the table is going to be the other component. Um, so whatever I define in that uh, fundamental component, which I showed you just, just before. Uh, so the, the whole set of code comes into this one. And I have some extra code to show the record view form. So that's why I showed, first I initially showed you the demo, like. Uh, four different components altogether, and I now merged all these four into one. And I have this uh, for the table. I have this view more. Everything is same as in the previous code. I just copy pasted that, and then made it as a hybrid. And if you see the JavaScript side, and the one other um, uh, difference in the design token would be. So this, uh, this particular hybrid is based on the design tokens. The other one that you saw is going to the custom data types to pull in the data. So for the design tokens, let me show you how that works. So for the design tokens, you would be defining it here. For LWC, you will be defining it in the XML file, the supported XML file and uh, near the targets. And you would instruct all these to show up on the UI. So once you define it here, uh, you will be using the same name uh, on the attributes as well, uh, so that it matches. And then if it is matching, those keywords will be showing up on your configuration UI, which is the recorded form UI. Sorry, uh, Lightning App Builder UI. So that is on the design token. So on the JavaScript side. So if you see on the JavaScript side, um, I have defined to for just for the um, differentiation, I have cloned that particular method. Uh, and then um, and for this example, we are not using 
we are not using this um, custom metadata types. So I have a different method for that. So that method is uh, no way uh, different from the other one, except for this first line here uh, in this method, the list of list all fields is a first method that I explained to you. So here you will see the custom metadata types being pulled. Here in the list all fields too, there is no custom metadata types usage. So it directly passes the object name, column names, row names, uh, increment the counter, uh, and view more option. So all these are coming from the design tokens. And again, uh, you, if you're wondering, um, as this will contradict the concept, it will not contradict because uh, these are still unknown for the Apex controller uh, until it receives this um, attributes from your design tokens, it will not know which object it is going to query. It's, it will not know which uh, columns it's going to query, what is the row number and et cetera. So it is still unknown parameters for uh, the Apex controller. So so that's the, that's the concept uh, where as long as you keep the Apex controller more dynamic and uh, flexible uh, by not instructing directly on the code. So instead of object name, I can even hard code this object name as, okay, you need to uh, query only the contact or you need to query only the uh, account object and uh, you if you specify those column names inside your apex controller or inside your aura, aura attributes so that becomes the actual challenge when there is a need for uh, sorry uh, when there is a change coming up from your customer and then you need to like uh, okay i need to go and touch the code for changing those parameters now object name and column name comes from your configuration side. So which makes it easy for your admins or consultants to directly change it without uh, going through that whole uh, long period of uh, development cycle. So that, so that is the whole concept here for the hybrid. So based on that show form, uh, the view form and data table renders up and none of your metadata information is coming from your code everything is either coming from your design token, which obviously is feeded up from the lightning page, or it is coming from the customer data types. So that wraps my demo. And um, um, here is the link for your um, GitHub. So right now I have uh, only these R files. I'm working on the LWC files. Uh, so just uh, keep a follow on this particular uh, repo, and then uh, you can uh, check back again probably a uh, few weeks from now and then uh, the LWC also will be ready uh, for that for the same uh, implementation and feel free to uh, like go ahead and clone this and then uh, you, if you want to use it in your project uh, you can use it and then going back to best practices before, yeah so uh, Best practices, uh, there is no set best practices like um, like a predefined best practices because this, this is basically a concept of um, concept of mine or we, we are basically using it elsewhere, but it is not like sales was defined best practices. So what I can say what, uh, what I can uh, feel as a best practice, but please uh, uh, you, don't, you don't have to be uh, following this very strictly, um, it depends on your project nature, it depends on your uh, client nature. Um, so it, this is not the industry best practices, but this is what uh, I feel uh, is best for implementing these type of solutions. So the first one is leverage your custom metadata uh, or the custom settings or custom labels depending on how big is your requirement. So if your requirement is to show a table or show a form, go for custom metadata, metadata types. If your requirement is just to show one field on the UI, or if your requirement is to just store a particular value, uh, store a particular value that you're using on the UI repetitively, then go with custom labels or custom settings, whichever is easy for you. And uh, yeah, uh, always whenever you design a lightning component, and if you feel that your lightning component should be like reusable, flexible, and all those sort of uh, uh, parametrics, you you got to be having um, a, a, a design of like building just a skeleton uh, rather than building the whole uh, whole body. So which means um, so in our case in, in the demos uh, whatever you saw, 
uh, the code, the coding part has only the skeleton. So the coding part doesn't know uh, what object or uh, how many rows or any of those parameters, right? So still those parameters are metadata uh, technically, right? So they are not data. So even those metadata information are being stored in a custom metadata uh, so that your code has only the design, has only the uh, structure and uh, the structure can change based on that custom metadata information. So design in that way so that it will be more useful whenever your uh, application keeps changing in the future. Maybe down the line after five years, uh, they may not want a table. Instead, they want to see it as a form. You can quickly change that through the metadata types or through the design tokens. You don't have to like touch the code for that. And uh, always, yeah, whenever you design, you uh, have that uh, mindset of uh, enabling your admins uh, to quickly change uh, however you want to change it. There could be some scenarios you cannot do that. Um, certain complex uh, requirements, you cannot enable like uh, a completely flexible lightning components for that. And that is totally fine. You don't have to feel guilty about it. Uh, you can always uh, have certain components specific for that requirement. But when it comes to like common, common things like uh, creating this table or form, uh, try to think in a mindset that how a person can manage this com completely through configuration and not touching the code again for any maintenance purposes. And um, yeah, as I always tell, tell uh, keep it highly configurable. Salesforce uh, best practices is basically configuration first and go for the development only if it gets complex. And uh, yeah, so another, the common thumb rule about <coughs> creating lightning component is um, whenever you create a lightning component for one particular requirement, if you are creating more than uh, like uh, on, on a high level, if you are creating more than two, three components, you are basically uh, either not doing it right or that requirement should be really complex that demands you to create more than two, three components. Uh, you might be wondering uh, the concept of lightning development is basically modularization, which means build as many as components as possible. Yes, that is true. Uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, you're building the table and you want to have each cell as a particular uh, component uh, so that it makes you flexible. So that is the concept they are trying to uh, explain you through that sentence, like keep it modular means that whole component should be broken down into multiple components, but that whole component should not be repeated again. Let's say you're building a table, you should not be building contact table separately, you should not be building account table separately for that one page. If you have a page which has four tables, build one table, and use that table for the four places. That's what I mean, mean by more than two components. So if you're building four tables, obviously you're uh, either wasting that resource or uh, the complex is completely uh, complex. Say uh, each table has its own type of customization. Only then there you will be creating four separate tables. <clears throat> so that's what I mean by don't, do not build more than two components. And of course, you for each of that big component, you need to modularize it, and you need to like um, create multiple tiny components so that you can you can even like move around those components inside that particular table. And obviously, uh, when it comes to Lightning, it's always modularization and reusability. So um, it comes to the same point: you keep one component, make it make it reusable. All right, so that wraps my session. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'm open to answer. And for the GitHub link, um, uh, if you want to contact Amit, uh, he can share you. Amit, I'll share you the link. Or if you have taken a screenshot, uh, probably that should be good enough. Yeah, I will do one thing. Uh, I will uh, share that. Uh, that in our Apex our website. And apart from that, guys, if you have any question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question directly, or you can add a question on the chat window. Try now, you will able to unmute yourself now. Yeah, yeah. thanks Amit. Hi Anand, uh, this is Madhu. So like, uh, this is very helpful, which you have explained already. So, I have a uh, more cases like the 50% cases is with the fields and all those things component. 
but uh, we have other things which we need to configure by component to component when we are using the same component. Let's suppose uh, with the, this table we have, sometimes we have to show that header is uh, account related accounts. So if it is we are showing that contacted uh, list, then we have to show uh, related contacts. So the, the title of the header also would be configurable. So what would be the best structure? This is one example. This is one example, but uh, there will be other example we have to show uh, that uh, that is the individual entity, not regarding the fields. Uh, what is the best practices to sh configure those things? That's a, that's an excellent question. So, um, so for this example, uh, you might be seeing um, I'm keeping the object name and field names and row count and type as the um, configurable things, right? So if you remember uh, when, I, when I started this uh, demo, I, I told uh, this this is not the only configurable items you can keep in the custom metadata types. You can keep in custom metadata types anything. Like uh, if you want to keep, uh, like you told, if you want to keep the title of the page itself configurable, uh, you can do that through the design tokens and also have the title of the page inside this particular record. So if you are showing account table, this account table right now is a keyword. You can also have this label to say, okay, this is the account table. So I can like type in like related account table. Right now it will not work because I don't have that code logic to work. But if you define like this and ask your um, Apex code to use this particular label value to the title uh, lightning component code. So for example, for this lightning component, the lightning card title is flexible hybrid form, right? So instead of hard coding it here, keep that as a attribute and pull that attribute from your custom editor type. Yeah, thanks Anand. Uh, so uh, we had a requirement for that uh, four to five variables sometime and that goes sometime to configure the 10 variables. Uh, which because the component is very generic, we are not dedicating to one requirement. This will keep on changing. For some requirement, we are filling up three parameters. For for some requirement, we are filling up ten parameters. So uh, one parameter title will work. So what we do usually, we maintain a JSON in a metadata type. But the problem here is it's hard to maintain the JSON. Uh, that more that admin side. So uh, so you mean to say uh, JSON is being stored in the metadata type? Yeah, because we have to configure to take to 10 parameters based on the requirement. Okay, so those 10 parameters are uh, stored as JSON inside these uh, custom metadata type rows. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a single uh, text field and where they, we are maintaining a JSON. Because so is that again, the reason th why you uh, store it inside uh, as a JSON format? Uh, can't it be like a single value or a string of values? String of values, yeah. So this is the that, that's uh, we we have uh, followed the same thing as well, the string and the value. But uh, what would be the uh, best way? Like the JSON is uh, definitely because it's uh, it's not easy for the admin guide to change it. Right. We need so, to have. Uh, right. So uh, if if that is going to be tough for the admin to uh, maintain, and if you can convert that JSON into like this, so consider this field names, I can also have this field name as the uh, JSON format, if I want to, right? Um, so it's the, the same thing, it's, it's going to give me the same thing. So uh, as it's a list of strings, that's going to break and uh, that's going to be broken down as a list in the uh, controller, and then it's going to be used inside the controller. So instead of um, JSON, I'm sticking with a st string with comma parameters. So if that would be easy for your admin to um, put in that value, like a comma, para comma separated string, or it need not be comma separated as well, as well. like you can keep it in any structure uh, and then you can store it inside that field. Did I answer or did I? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 we, we are following similar kind of approach to maintain a uh, field and the value and that uh, sometimes JSON. So I just wanted to no like, best practices as such for that. Uh, if you are asking <laughs> for just the best practice, uh, there is no best practice as such. Uh, as I told, these are all the uh, practice that I follow in my projects for uh, like uh, for these type of requirements. Um, uh, but as long as you are following the, the, the Salesforce related best practices of being 
followed along with the along with your implementation that should be okay and uh, one of those uh, best practices with regards to salesforce in this uh, which i can point out is basically have these parameters i, I can even have this uh, as a one full string right uh, so i can store the whole query as a string here and then ask the uh, apex controller to fully take up that query rather than splitting into object name and field names so that's that's where the salesforce best practice comes in like don't have uh, keep it more mo keep it more modular and simpler so that it is configurable by admin and uh, don't complicate things on the configuration side so uh, at the end of the day um, it's about how you can enable your admin or your uh, whoever is going to configure it um, uh, more easily without with with minimal uh, interactions so yeah uh, as long as you are following that those lines uh, you should be good. You can follow any format uh, you want to use for your project. Yeah, thanks, Anand. And only last question is, like we have used the record view for. So one, uh, the pain point we have faced so far is uh, whenever we use that lookup field, it gives us ID in the label. And uh, it, that is not like it's a business, business ID is not acceptable kind of a thing. The ID, what does it mean for that end user? Nothing. It may confuse and why it is showing ID. So we that we are going for the long way to configure all those labels as well. So do we have any other workaround for this? Because this uh, is same in Aura LWC everywhere. Yeah, I haven't explored on the lookup, but it, uh, yeah, it gives me a good thought about uh, trying that out. Um, so let me try it out with the lookup field on the same uh, model. If uh, if I get any solutions, I'll post it to Amit and he can publish on the website on, on his uh, web page. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. So there's a question on the chat. Uh, can we implement actions like save, create, edit, next paginations as such? Um, you can, but uh, that there's a little more. Um, this is a little more work you have to do on this uh, on top of this uh, code so probably you what you can do is in terms of uh, custom metadata types uh, you can probably create another field maybe a text field or if you want to keep it as like a checkbox uh, let's say this data table has to have a action column and you want to show excuse me and you want to show um, save uh, create edit uh, all the four buttons or maybe one button or maybe uh, you want to show based on uh, user interaction so everything uh, depends on how you want to design that form but yes you can add that here and then um, based on whatever the keyword that you save or create whatever the keyword you're storing in this record you can design a apex logic and uh, trigger that particular method or that particular javascript method uh, based on what value comes from this one but you can design uh, this there's a lot more um, customization you have to do on the code um, before implementing that like your, your code should uh, as i always tell uh, the only concept you have to keep in mind is uh, how uh, have the design in a way that the code doesn't know until the runtime the code should not know what you are going to do until the runtime as long as you are going to design in that way your code will be always always be robust because your code will be designed to handle anything that comes along its way right so which means you are giving thoughts to design uh, uh, in all possible scenarios and when you when you give that thought uh, when you give the design uh, in those dot lines, uh, you can uh, you can make your code robust easily. But yeah, it is it is possible. It can be implemented for that question. And one other question is: When should we prefer using custom settings instead of custom metadata types? So I think I. Uh, told about that in the best practices. So custom settings, um, I think uh, Salesforce is now not recommending to use custom settings anymore. Uh, I would say custom labels. Uh, custom labels can be for anything that 
let's say you have a particular hard coded message or you have a particular uh, uh, what do you call a uh, small text value that you want to repeat inside the whole form or maybe your uh, pages that's where you have the custom labels yeah let me add one point here for the custom setting uh, say for say like if you want there are two types of custom setting previously like one is hierarchical another one the list so Salesforce is recommending if you want to create any list type, go with the custom metadata. But uh, if there is still hierarchical profile based in the scenario, you can go and use the custom setting. For the list based, definitely don't use custom setting, use the custom metadata only. Go ahead, Goa, sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, that's, that's my explanation for that question. Yeah. So. I'm just reading through all the comments from the first. I didn't see the comments from the first. Hey, Adrian. Nice to see you here. Hope to see you somewhere <laughs> in next meetups. Look like we are good for now. And thank you, Goa, for a great session. It's a good learning for everyone. And thank you everyone for the join. And still anybody have still any question, feel free to reach out to me or Google. And uh, I will be post this recording and PPT on our EpicsR website. <coughs> and I will also add the link for the repository so that you can download the code from there. And if you have any question, feel free to post over there and we will try to answer. Thank you everyone for the joining. Thank you, Goa. Thank you. Thanks, Amit. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn if you want to connect with me or uh, in Twitter, SF underscore Guha is my Twitter handle. Um, if you want to connect on Twitter. Yeah, feel free. If anyone is coming to Dreamforce, uh, do let me know. Let's catch up. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, guys. Thank